afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first meeting of 2024. Where's it all gone? First item on the agenda, I must say that uh, this meeting is being recorded. Next items are the approval of the minutes of the Cabinet on the 5th of December. Are you all in agreement with that? Thank you. Sign the book. Are there any apologies? I don't think there are. Anyone's here? Declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. And the first item number four is allocation of rural England prosperity funding. I'll go over to Mrs. Ned Roberts to go take us through that. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. So uh, this report will seek, seeks, informal, seeks formal approval from the Cabinet to allocate Rural England Prosperity Funding for the projects that are set out at Appendix A. Members, I'm sure, will know that the UK Share of Prosperity Fund is the central pillar of the UK Government's levelling up agenda, and the Rural England Prosperity Fund is a part of this and provides capital funding to do two things, to support new and existing rural businesses and to support new and improved community infrastructure. We opened up our Rural England Prosperity Fund bids in July 2023, and we've received a number of expressions of interest, and these have been assessed by a panel following conversations with the, with the applicants. And the three bids that are in front of us the, um, the, the, this afternoon, members, are Stoughton Village Hall, Kinver Point, and um, Blind and Shutter Limited. So three different bids. The first one is, is Stoughton Village Hall, which is a community bid for the provision of um, photovoltaic panels. Um, and the benefits of this, it will have increased community patronage. Um, we've also got Kinver Point, um, which is an existing business unit just on the outskirts of Kinver. Um, and it's for the conversion of a farm building. And that will create two indirect jobs and increase business space within the complex. And the third and final one that we've got this afternoon is the Blind and Shutter um, Blind and Shutter Limited, which is to convert industrial units into um, uh, warehousing space um, and floor and shop floor shop floor space. And this will create two new jobs and increase business space within the unit. Um, so they, their recommendations are that these three be approved um, as they meet the requirements set out in the UK um, Rural England Prosperity Fund um, and the, the, uh, the criteria that we've set out within our own funding agreements. They will all, also, subject to approval this afternoon, clearly, and be subject to any other requirements such as planning approvals, etc. So the recommendations are set out in the report, members, and I'm obviously happy to take any questions members may have. Thank you. Peter. It's not a question, it's a, a typo. However, under the Blinds and Shutter Company, it says conversation of industrial units rather than conversion. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? You all in agreement with the recommendations at 8.1? Thank you. We'll go on to the next item, which is the uh, medium term financial shot down. I'll call on Mrs. Mayor to take us through that, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, members. So, yeah, this report sets out the proposed draft budget for 2024 25 and the medium term financial strategy for the period 24 25 to 28 29. The proposals present a three year balanced budget until 26 27 years using general fund reserves and are based on the provisional local government settlement that was issued on the 19th of December 2023. Members are recommended to agree to increase council tax by five pounds and utilise £1.548 million pounds of general fund reserves in 24-25. Members are also recommended to support the revised capital programme and to maintain the minimum level of general fund reserves at £1 million. Pounds. The local government policy statement and then the provisional settlement confirmed a number of important factors for setting the budget, and these are outlined in paragraph 4.2 of the report. The main area, areas of relevance to the Council are that the new homes bonus will continue next year. 
the services grant is reducing and the funding guarantee will continue so that it ensures that all authorities see a 3% increase in core spending power. So that reduction in the services grant um, is offset by the increase in the funding guarantee. There's no mention of any potential doubts for funding reform or the business rights reset other than to confirm that this won't happen next financial year. The Council has had to make a number of key assumptions in setting the budget and these are set out in paragraph 6.4 of the report. The main ones to highlight are uh, the pay award has been assumed at 4.5% for next year reducing to 3% in 25-26 and then 2% after that. Council tax increases of £5 each year. General inflationary increase of 4.6% next year and then 2% in future years. Um, known contractual increases have also been built into the budget where appropriate. We've currently assumed that the business rights reset will happen in 2026-27 and have also assumed there will be some transitional protection and that will be 50% in year one and 25% in year two. We have assumed business rights growth from West Midlands Interchange, ROF Featherstone and RO54 Western Extension and that's been built in from 27-28 at a mid-case estimate. We've assumed new homes bonus will cease after next year, but we'll we will continue to receive the funding guarantee until 26-27. And we have also set aside a million pounds in reserves for the potential cost of temporary accommodation. So the updated MTFS includes a number of adjustments related to the impact and costs or income of continuing our services as usual, known as business as usual adjustments. And it also includes budget amendments agreed as part of the resource planning and prioritisation process. And these are detailed in Appendix 2 of the report. Table 1 and 2 of the report sets out the updated MTFS position and the resulting general fund reserves. This shows the need to use general fund reserves across the MTFS, but this is sustainable and general fund reserves remain above the minimum level until part way through 27-28. Table 3 then shows how the MTFS position has moved since the previous approved version in, from February 2023. Business rights remains the largest source of funding for the council and also the biggest risk area due to the impending business rights reset. And the ability for the council to make use of general fund reserves in the early years of the MCFS is largely dependent on us knowing that we are likely to generate increased business rates through developments such as West Midlands Interchange in future years. However, the business rates reset could well impact on our ability to retain this growth and we are also dependent on the, those developments and when they are built out and occupied. So table six in the report sets out some sensitivity analysis around those business rights assumptions and how changes in those could impact on the MTFS position moving forward. The capital programme is set out in detail in Appendix 3 and includes, includes three new projects that were agreed as part of the RPP process. These are um, relating to car park improvements, leisure centre equipment replacement and replacement of vehicles from street scene and baggerage. The final area to highlight is the section on earmarked reserves, which is summarised in paragraph 10.1 onwards. More detail is also provided in appendix six and seven. This sets out the council's current position in terms of earmarked and general fund reserves. And the appendix also provides my assurance as section 151 officer that this position is adequate to cover potential risks as things stand. This completes my summary of the report and I'll now hand back to the leader and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Is there any, anyone got any questions? David? <laughs> Thank you, Liam. Just, just one actually. Obviously now that the, um, the two hotels have now stopped and uh, therefore the the people who were living there have really moved on that million pound reserve is that more likely that we'll actually need that in the future or is that still a risk that we've got going forward 
think at the moment we're still, because of so much of uncertainty generally around temporary accommodation costs, so not just around the, the hotels, um, we're keeping the number of pounds as it is. Um, but honestly, because it's been set aside in reserves, if as the, the year goes on, it looks like we're unlikely to use that difficulty, we are allocating that to other priorities. Don't want to give reserve. So. I'm concerned that any changes may be made on that, that provision because we are dealing with the unknown and that is a problem. And that the, number, the figure that we've got there, hopefully we won't spend, but it will be there if it's needed. And that on the day is only for one year. No further questions? I, I would like to formally propose then the recommendations of 2.1 A, B, C, D and F. Are you all in agreement with that? Thank you very much. Can I just confirm that I wanted to um, second that proposal? Thank you. And that brings the meeting to a close. There's no other business. No other business. Right. Thank you very much indeed.